Imagine you could use everyday technology to get a hold on your medical records. How would that be? Not to be used DGID in the Netherlands or some kind of other card that people are creating, again, with an implementation on an IT project that costs like zillions of bucks? What if we could use technology that's in your pocket and use it for that, and that in the Netherlands, 93% of all people are using to get a hold on their banking records, for instance? That was the question that I posed to a team that's coming up at, uh, at, as a slide, uh, of Deloitte, switch to the slide, thank you very much, Deloitte, SNS, and some of our people from Reshape. And the question was, could you use new technology as the blockchain? And maybe uh, Jacob could come on stage already. The blockchain to try and figure out whether or not that, that works to put the data in the hands of the people himself. So let's give it for the blockchain. This is Jacob from... <laughs> Hi, Lucien. Take us at the hand of the things that we have been doing up until now. In I think it's a, about like 24 hours we created the, the things that we want to show you guys right exactly. now. Okay. As you see, I've brought my own uh, healthcare blockchain here with me. Um, blockchain was developed as a technology for more for the financial services, to do payments uh, and to do uh, transactions of financial value without a central authority. Uh, this uh, works by having a shared ledger, which all the people in the network all share, and all can uh, connect to, and all can see uh, that all transactions have been done correctly and that there is no fraud. Um, this uh, distributed system is, uh, works uh, uh, kind of well for financial services, but it's actually even more interesting for a healthcare case. Because uh, in uh, healthcare, of course, we've tried doing um, uh, information sharing on with a centralized database of uh, um, patient information, but that's uh, very clunky and, and, and really, uh, really hard to get right. Uh, Some vendors are in the audience. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but privacy, for example, making sure that uh, everything is encrypted and uh, can only be seen by those who have been granted access is, is much easier to do in, in, a, in a blockchain system where all the encryption is already built in. Uh, the, the whole linking of many different uh, parties, patients, um, uh, doctors, uh, pharmacies, uh, manufacturers is also much easier in such an open system. Uh, we built, uh, as a proof of concept, um, a system, uh, an application for uh, patients to be in charge of their own ident uh, identity information and to be in charge of their own uh, healthcare information, uh, to selectively share it with their doctors, and also to be able to receive um, prescriptions, which they then can uh, choose where they, to which supplier they want to send these prescriptions. So the patient is completely in control. That's what we're looking for. Excellent. Um, one of the things that we didn't, um, er, so weren't able to solve with blockchain is the identity problem. How to link the physical identity of uh, the healthcare consumer to his digital identity on the blockchain. But luckily, we had uh, SNS Bank as one of the partners in this uh, project. And um, as a bank, they've already solved this identity problem and uh, have been able to. Uh, make available their uh, technology for secure authentication, uh, which they also use for uh, their internet banking. And we can now use that to uh, log in to this healthcare application. Well, so let's, uh, let's, yeah. let's take a look. So I think this one's mine, which states patient. Is it? Okay, yeah. It is very good. So now, th now I need my bank card, right? Uh, yeah, because you need to log in to the system. Carrying that always with me, of course. My card. What's next? Well, first you need to uh, uh, put in the code. So I need a random reader. I carry my random reader everywhere. So that's <laughs> excellent. By coincidence, I got one, as you can imagine. So I will take the codes and then we'll enter it in here. Very good. And enter. And enter. Uh, return. Oh, no. Think something. Always interesting with live demos. Uh, ah, there it is. So that's so now 
So yeah. that's my record. Yes. Now my you medication have record. Your complete okay. record, not just your medication record, but actually also all, um, an overview of all the healthcare providers who have access to your medical records. Right. So now I, as your healthcare provider, this is my screen on the right. Uh, here I, I see that um, here you're not on my list, so you oh, haven't yeah. actually given me any uh, any access. So I should grant you. I, yes. as a patient, should grant you access to it. Indeed. Well, let's put it on that. No, no, my, my my information has already been filled out. Somebody tricked the system, but that's fine. <laughs> so I now added you yeah. to it. So you, I'm now there, and if I refresh my screen, I there see that you're now. Uh, I now have access to your to yeah. your healthcare information, Good. so I can I can look at your at your dossier, and I see all the prescriptions uh, and the running that ones. On there. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So and if you you can also look at your own prescriptions, of course. Yeah. Like my prescriptions. Mm -hmm. These are these. Yeah. And uh, the, neither of our systems are directly communicating to each other. It's all we're all looking at this information that is stored on the on the publicly available blockchain. Through the, blo through the help of the blockchain. So yes. this is actually working. So it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a canned kind of demo, but it actually works. Like yes. Okay, so um, for example, now, uh, if I, as your doctor, want to, um, uh, for example, say uh, I go to your prescriptions and I revoke uh, the, the medicine that you're no longer needing. Yep. I press revoke and it, so I got if, if you refresh it. your screen. Yep. And it also disappears there. Yeah. And now I add a prescription for a new uh, now it's uh, get tricky. medicine. And again, you see it available there. It is. There. Uh, it is. Yeah, sorry. Yep. I'm looking at the wrong screen. Yep. Uh, and as you see there now an order button. So you now have the prescription, and you actually can select immediately to uh, to order it from uh, from a supplier, from, from your pharmacist. preferred pharmacist, like for Amazon or something yeah. like that. So if you click on the order button, order, and then yeah, so you see the amount left goes down to four. So you still have four prescriptions left, and uh, whenever you want, you can uh, uh, when you run out of the out of the first batch, you yep. can you can order again. Okay. Uh, and of course now, because our consultation is, has uh, concluded, you uh, could now uh, revoke again my access to your medical data. Yeah. So I go to granted Grant access. access, then I revoke Jacob. Mm -hmm. All done by myself with the help of the banking card again. It's a working system. And as, you, as and I refresh gone. the screen, I'm, I'm no longer... Uh, I can no longer access your information. Well, well, that's it. It looks as easy as anybody could try and figure this out, but why is this so different from the other systems, and why don't we have this already? Well, if, you, um, if we can go back to the presentation. Back to the slides for a second. Back to the slides. Uh, now I probably need to press this one. Yeah. Oh. So this is what happens in the background. And... Um, what, what is different from a centralized system is that uh, basically all the transactions happen peer to peer. So the doctor uh, uh, sends uh, sends it to you, you send it send it to the supplier, uh, and all the uh, the data is registered on the blockchain. Uh, and so everybody can at every point check whether or not that data is is still valid. And for example, the pharmacy can check if it's a real receipt. Uh, given out by a real doctor. It also, if you haven't uh, sneakily gone to another pharmacy already to fulfill your prescription, so it can never be double spent. And uh, afterwards, uh, 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 supervisors from the government, for example, can always also check uh, at what point uh, access was granted to uh, see medical records, etc. So it's all uh, stored on this uh, shared ledger, so there's no single point of failure. There's no system which can be uh, uh, hacked or taken out by a uh, denial of service attack. And this is what makes it very uh, powerful as a very powerful tool. And um, this is not so. Um, if you want to try this for yourself, we've actually uh, put this demo up on uh, on the internet to try. So you can go to uh, to our prescript.com website and try it out for yourself. And this is of course only the first step 
in, a, in a, a very simple process, but we are planning to kind of increase this by, for example, getting uh, health insurance on board for uh, to, to uh, optimize costs, to get manufacturers on board because they can also use the blockchain to uh, prevent counterfeiting of medicine, to, to get uh, medicine dispensers uh, onto this system, so the dispenser itself can order new uh, medication when it's starting to run low. This is all possible because we put this on this uh, very easily uh, accessed uh, technology. So the three of us as organizations are stepping onto the blockchain. We think it's a very promising technology. We're only at the brink of it, so that's, uh, keep, keep an eye on that and we'll publish also some of the, ins uh, the insights on our website. Yeah. Great, thank you again. Thank Thanks. you.